6 starts now. The COVID-19 threat is not over. That's the word from Governor Tate Reeves, even as the state allows some businesses to reopen this week. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6 after loosening restrictions and as restaurants and parks prepare to reopen Thursday. The governor told Mississippians today that just because something is legal doesn't mean it's smart for you and your family. Reeves urges families to take personal responsibility as the crisis continues. Even with those looser restrictions statewide, he says data varies county by county and some counties could see stricter guidelines if COVID-19 cases rise. We've got to be take more of a surgical approach at this time to make sure that we if we need to push resources, if we need to te push testing, if we need to push uh, people uh, in those communities, that's what we're going to do. The governor pointed out that in the last two weeks, there have been a hundred new cases in Scott County, Mississippi, versus one in Alcorn County. Under the guidance from Dr. Dobbs, they'll look at possibly adding restrictions to higher exposed areas. It's the news that restaurant owners have been waiting to hear waiting to, for weeks to hear that is yesterday Governor Tate Reeves announced that they'll be able to reopen their dining areas this week with restrictions. Our Barbie Martinez talks with a Starkville restaurant owner about the return and the rules. The time has finally arrived restaurants being able to reopen for in-house dining but in doing so they must follow certain restrictions. I am going to revise my order today to allow for outdoor and in-room dining with strict social distancing guidelines. It was music to the ears of restaurant owners. We're excited about being able to reopen. The impact of COVID-19 has put a hurt on many restaurants in recent months. Kyle Haybear, owner of Moe's Barbecue in Starkville, says he's happy to see things starting to get back to normal. I'm excited about having my staff back on the payroll. I mean, I really am. You know, some people are saying it's too soon. I'm a restaurant owner. Uh, I'm not going to complain about reopening, but it's very important that everybody follows the guidelines. Wear a mask when you come inside, have it on so we don't have to ask you to put it on. These new restaurant guidelines will come into effect Thursday and part of the agreement, only half of the restaurant's capacity will be allowed and customers are to be screened upon entry, something Haber says he will be keeping an eye on. I only have a portion of the building open so it's not too, too much to handle for the employees that we have. And, uh, as soon as somebody gets up, man, we just sanitize everything. With the shift in regulations, Starkville Fire Marshal Mark McCurr says the department will be on hand to help restaurants get ready to open. What we're offering or suggesting to folks is, you know, it could be confusing to understand exactly what those numbers are. So if a, if a specific restaurant has any questions or concerns related to what that 50% number is, we're welcome to call here to the fire station, to the fire marshal's office, and uh, we can help guide them through it. Reporting in Starkville, Bobby Martinez, WCBI News. Parks are also on the governor's list of places that can reopen this week. Many will follow social distancing guidelines and state mandated sanitation requirements, but regulating those orders is easier said than done. Some cities are taking their time deciding whether or not how to follow the governor's orders, but in places like Ackerman, they aren't wasting any time. We're not New York City. We're not in a petri dish, dish of the subway. It's time for us to go to work. And what we've decided to do is open our parks, bring our people back, and go to work. And that's what we do in Ackerman. We're not afraid of things. Come to Ackerman. You're going to like what you see. And Starkville city officials there say that they have yet to decide whether or not to reopen their parks. Even with all the reopenings scheduled for this week, salons and barbershops remain closed. While they're ready to open, there's no word on when they'll be able to do so. Our Quentin Smith speaks with local salon owners. He joins us live in the studio on their reaction. Quentin. Yeah, Scott, the ones I spoke with have mixed responses. Many stylists and shops are ready to serve their customers and help their bottom line. But one owner says she can put money over the health and safety of her clients. Now she's considering whether to stay closed for good. Inside Shades and Company Hair and Nail Salon, clippers are no longer buzzing, nail polish remains untouched, and chairs continue to sit empty as workers wait for an announcement on when they can reopen. 
It's been pretty tough because you know just because we're not working and we're not being we're not opening that doesn't mean our bills stop. The salon has been closed for more than a month. You know if we don't work we don't make money. Victoria Dawkins is a nail tech at the salon and says she never imagined being out of work for this long. I have three kids I have to take care of and six weeks nothing because you know the unemployment stuff it's hard to get if you're uh, self-employed. Dawkins believes salons can and should be allowed to resume business as normal as long as they're implementing safety measures. We're held at a higher standard anyways when it comes to sanitation rules and regulations so I feel like not that we're more sanitized than other people but it just feels like you know he's not giving us a chance to you know get back out there like everybody else. However for Tammy Carlisle who owns Minerva Gallery and Salon in Starkville the biggest challenge she sees is not being able to practice social distancing. You cannot get a haircut from six feet away obviously I mean it just can't it's just not possible so it's it's 50-50. I mean, you're sort of damned if you do and damned if you don't. Now, Carlisle is contemplating a big decision. Trying to decide whether or not to stay closed or reopen. The salon owner says she wants to reopen, but she also wants to do so in a safe manner while following all CDC guidelines. I want to know more about the numbers. I want to wait and see what the data says. I want to listen to the scientists and see what they're sharing with the world about precautions. Now, as we all know, Governor Tater Reeves plans to reopen the state in phases. Barbershops and salons will, will reopen in phase four. Right now, we're just entering into phase two. Scott? All right, Quentin, thanks so much. The Columbus Police Department is cracking down on the city's curfew. Due to the coronavirus spread, the city has been under a mandatory curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Chief Fred Shelton says officers have been pretty relaxed about issuing tickets for people past curfew, but that's all about to change. The uptick in numbers is causing concern, and the chief says unless you're out for essential business, if it's after 10, be prepared to get a ticket. If I come to your house and you're having a birthday party, a backyard barbecue, and it's after 10, you're going to get a citation. We're in the middle of a pandemic. You know, the numbers in Mississippi are going up. I think we're at about 7,000 positive cases and over 200 deaths. That's serious, and we want the people to take it serious. Shelton is also encouraging folks to wear masks if you have to go out in public. At least one person was out past curfew last night in Columbus, and a boarded up wall is what remains of the late night drive. Nearby residents tell WCBI the driver of a vehicle crashed through the wall of this apartment on 15th Avenue South. The driver, who may have been evading Columbus police in the first place, then took off on foot. At least four people were inside that apartment when the vehicle landed in the wall. The good news is no serious injuries have been reported from those living there. Investigators are still searching for the driver who may have injuries from that accident. We have some clouds and some showers around here earlier. The showers really on the way out. The clouds on the way out too alive. You in Louisville, Mississippi, a lot of beautiful sunshine out there right now. Just a little band of showers moving into Kemper County away from our area. Notice with the visible satellite, things are improving each and every second. So it's going to be a great evening of weather. Temperatures in the low and mid 70s across the board. 74 in Tupelo, 73 Winona, 75 in Columbus. For the backyard this evening, right now, get out there and make the most of it. It is looking great if you want to fire up that grill. Lows tonight, partly cloudy skies. Lows will be down into the lower 50s here, turning quiet. And really for the next week or so, we're looking pretty good, just unseasonably cool for us. More in your full forecast coming up. Well, three men are charged after an armed robbery at an Oxford motel over the weekend. Jeremy Drummer, Jarion Kelly and Jatori Moore are charged with armed robbery and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Oxford police say the incident happened Saturday night at Quality Inn on Jackson Avenue. The suspects allegedly robbed the motel clerk at gunpoint and stole cash from the register. Bond is set at $150,000 for all three of the suspects. A Tupelo caregiver is accused of taking a large amount of money from an elderly disabled person, 51-year-old Mary Smith is charged with three counts of exploitation of a vulnerable adult. Investigators allege Smith took the money for personal use. Smith was arrested after a search warrant on a home in the Mount Vernon area. Her bond is set at $75,000.
Saltillo police are looking for two people who broke into a restaurant's freezer, getting away with several things. Police say the Saltillo Skybox restaurant's outside meat freezer was broken into at the end of April. Police believe the two white men were driving a dark-colored minivan and are behind the crime. Now, if you recognize the individuals, you're asked to call the Crime Stoppers or Saltillo Police Department. A $1,000 reward is being offered. And in Tupelo, police there need your help finding a woman they say cashed a fake check. Police say back in February, this woman cashed a counterfeit check at a gas station. The check had information from a local business. Again, if you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number there at the bottom of your screen. Toyota team members will return to work next week, and they'll see a lot of safety measures, protocols, and practices to protect from COVID-19. We'll have that story coming up on WCBI News. Welcome back, everyone. One of the largest employers in the region is preparing to bring its team members back. Our Allie Martin was invited to tour the Toyota plant in Blue Springs as they clean up ahead of their Monday reopening. When team members return Monday, they'll notice a lot of changes. Everything from entering the plant, eating lunch, and working on the assembly line. It's all part of a massive effort to keep everyone safe in the wake of COVID-19. That's the most important thing, the health and safety of our team members and their safe return. And it starts from the parking lot all the way in. Toyota Mississippi President Sean Suggs demonstrated the process team members will go through as they come to work. Each team member must answer a short survey. And it's the CDC guideline questions. In the last 14 days, have you been exposed? Team members will have their temperatures taken before entering the plant, and the company is providing face masks and face shields. Visitors have to go through the same protocol. Inside, the plant is unusually quiet. Corollas have not rolled off the line in seven weeks, but a skeleton crew of 200 has helped maintain the plant and make service parts. Also, the 2 million square foot plant has been sanitized and CDC guidelines have been implemented. There are six foot distance markers, hand sanitizer stations throughout the facility and other safeguards. So if you need to see a team member, this sign just basically says contact the group leader. Plexiglass partitions have been installed in operations and administration. Team members made the partitions, and they are also making masks for the entire plant. In the cafeteria, social distancing guidelines are enforced. Through the shutdown, team members have stayed in touch with their group leaders. We have been in contact with our team members on a regular basis through what we call Mendomi calls. And basically, Mendomi in Japanese just means taking care of your team members like their family. So our group leaders have reached out to our team members um, on a weekly basis. Congressman Trent Kelly was part of the tour with other local government leaders. He says getting the Blue Springs plant up and running impacts many people and many businesses. Toyota is not just Toyota, the plant here. It's all the suppliers that make those things. So those getting back open, doing it in the right way, in a safe way, but getting our folks back to work is so important. A survey of team members showed 97 percent were eager to get back to work. Toyota is hoping that by reopening the plant, it will show other business owners that it is possible to get employees back on the job safely and get the economy moving once again. In Blue Springs, Allie Martin, WCBI News. Toyota estimates it will take about three months to get production back up to capacity there at the Blue Springs plant. All right, we're going to send things back over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Keith, you sent out a tweet earlier today talking about a lot of sunshine in the forecast. Lots of sun, just one hiccup here. Let me show you that one chance of rain over the next seven. That will be Friday, a pretty good chance for some showers or thunder showers. Nothing strong, nothing severe expected, but what you don't see here, a lot of sun will show you that in the seven day forecast. Alert AccuWeather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Great weather developing this evening and pretty nice weather for most of the week ahead. Here's our Wednesday 70 in Columbus, 71 Starkville, West Point, 69 Tupelo. We'll start out the day with a lot of sun. We'll bubble up a few clouds. It will be breezy. Winds from the northwest at about 10 to 20, gusting to 25, but low 70s across the board from 82 south. Maybe only the mid 60s for you in New Albany and Boonville. It is going to be chilly. 
for mid-May. And there will be more clouds across northeastern parts of the area, maybe near Hamilton, Alabama, too. Around 70 in Vernon, 69 in Sullivan. So that is our day tomorrow. We have a parade of high pressure coming on down. Now, this is starting up in Canada. This is more like a winter-like weather pattern with some cool high pressure coming in from the north, and that will give us some clear days and some cool nights. Look at these forecast lows. Thursday morning, 43. Saturday, 43. Sunday morning, 40. The average is 56. And some of those mornings could actually feature near or new record lows. Quite unusual considering how warm and wet it has been for many, many months, many, many years. And now we're switching things up just a little bit here in this month of May in 2020. Big storms lined up across northern South Carolina into north Georgia. Heavy rain, lightning, hail, even an ongoing tornado warning right there northeast of Columbia, South Carolina right now. That is what the cold front that actually moved through here earlier today. It's gone. Now we are looking upstream. Things are looking pretty good. Notice these clouds up here in Iowa. Some of those will pivot down into our region tomorrow. So it's not going to be sunny for the entire day tomorrow, but overall it should be a pretty decent day. Just cool and breezy for us. We've got a great evening of weather. That's our Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Temperatures in the 70s and for lows tonight, down into the low 50s, so quite comfortable. Tomorrow, as we mentioned, mid-60s, the low 70s locally. Farther south, more sun, mid-70s and meridian pushing 80 or into the low 80s, closer to the Gulf of Mexico. There's the front and moved on through. We have a cool day tomorrow, but we mentioned some of those clouds will pivot in for a little bit for our Wednesday. Thursday's looking pretty good. We may see some high clouds drift in late. Our next weather maker will come in Friday. There's a front. There'll be moisture coming in on ahead of it. We'll see some showers and storms. We don't anticipate any strong or severe weather. A half inch, maybe an inch plus, give or take here. Not a big deal for us. And then sunshine and chilly weather for our Saturday. Let's show you that with your active weather 70 forecast. 70 tomorrow, 73 Thursday. Some of you in the north will be a little bit cooler. 60s on Friday, a chance for some rain and storms. Only 66 Saturday, very chilly, but sunshine for this weekend. 72 Sunday, low to mid 70s early next week, Scott. Tupelo football has found its man to lead the football program. The latest on the high school football coaching carousel coming up next in sports. BBI Sports with Courtney Robb is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Houston football experienced some of the most successful seasons under head coach Ty Harden. And Harden is now on the move, hoping to bring that success to Tupelo. The Tupelo School Board names Harden the head football coach of the Golden Wave. Harden led the Hilltoppers for four seasons with a record of 38 and 14, leading the playoffs in each season. The newest head coach of the Golden Wave says he's excited for the new opportunity and is thankful for his time in Houston. I can say I've left this place better than I found it. And uh, what's been great about it is everybody's reached out to me uh, in support of it, understanding and, um, and excited about what, what's about to happen in Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, you, you can ask those people in Houston right now of uh, the impact of what Houston football has had on uh, the community. Definitely going to miss the relationships and the people here, but also too. There's some, there's some kids in Tupelo, there's some young men in Tupelo that need somebody right now, and that's what I'm excited to get towards. The big day for Tupelo continues. Jason Miller has been hired as the newest activities director. Milo, Miller is a Tupelo alumnus and spent the past six years at DeSoto Central. After losing four out of five starters, Mississippi State has begun to fill some of the holes in the roster. Jackson native Keandre Montgomery officially commits to play for Ben Howland next season. In his senior season, Montgomery averaged 28 points, eight and a half rebounds, and four assists per game. Montgomery picks the Bulldogs over Auburn, Clemson, Ole Miss, and Murray State. The first start playing, I ain't know I was gonna have a full scholarship. I ain't know I was gonna be who I am today. God, man. He showed me things and he made it happen. My time to contribute right away. You know what I'm saying? What I bring, my teamwork, my hard work, my dedication, whatever, all I put in the game, I feel like I'm going to, they're going to get the best out of me. That's it for sports. We'll have more for you when we come back. Stay with us. Just like last night, a mostly sunny to partly cloudy evening, developing comfortable temperatures. We are in the 70s. It looks like we'll be in the 70s for the near term and then 60s and 50s.
During the overnight hours, that's our Columbus planner. Get ready for more sun for your Wednesday and Thursday. Seasonably cool for us. Our next and really only chance of rain for the next couple of days here, Scott, will be on Friday. Be another good weekend to open the windows up. Third good, uh, third good one in a row, actually. Th that's right. We, we, mm. We've needed these weekends. We deserve three <laughs> we, in a row. Don't we are we? owed them, yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Keith. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you back here at 10.